Hey gang, so uh, of course Invictus is coming up in 10 days, which is popping up pretty quick. So that is what, next weekend? No, next Thursday, I believe, is when it's going to start. So they will probably have a concept sale or a couple during the thing. They usually do. I uh, thought it might be good to kind of go through the history of Invictus, kind of tell the expectations for this event and uh, what I expect to see in Nazi. So if that sounds good. Let's get this. All right, so this right here is 2954, which is interesting. So they started Invictus around, I wanna say the first one was 2019. It used to be around 2016 or so. We would get a ship sale almost every month. We'd get a concept ship sale almost every month and that continued I want to say clear up to 2020 or maybe 2019. Uh, but around then, CIG started to compress uh, their ship sales into like every other month. They'd, they'd have occasional sales around holidays. So you'd have things around St. Patty's Day or Valentine's Day or... Uh, things like that to get Veterans Day. They'd, they'd have some sales, but they usually wouldn't have like big concept sales, except for around these bigger events the last few years. Uh, and Invictus is one of them. And every single year there's a rumor around Invictus, around there being a huge secret ship, usually a Corvette or a destroyer or like a cruiser or something like that coming in Invictus. And what I'm going to show you now is that tends not to happen and Invictus tends to be smaller ships. So let's get into that. Let's go into the history a little bit and then we'll jump forward and look at this here. So the first one in 2019, this is 2020, so I'll get to this in a second. The first one in 2019, I think they just kind of had the feeling that there's a lot of people that were having FOMO about missing out on IA and they're kind of like, God, I'm gonna have to wait a full year or like 11 months until the next IAE before I can buy these ships or the next, uh, um, anniversary sale and I think CIG was realizing rather than having one gigantic sale at the end of the year and then not giving people access to any of those ships through the entire year but except for like these little like concept sales through it they could have a couple big sales through the year and Invictus turned out to kind of be one of them uh, so they rolled out Invictus and they just kind of made the military ships uh, available um, so it was kind of focused on combat ships but that's become a little more fuzzy as time is going on as you'll see so in 2020 we got this one you can sort of see it's a no frills web page they kind of picked up on the fact that people wanted to buy the big ships like the Polaris, the Idris, the Javelin and stuff like that. And they'll have specialized waves. Uh, they didn't have any special concept sales I, that I can remember for 2951 or uh, let's see, 2020. Um, it was more just a chance to buy all the ships from IE that were like military driven, which they used to all be. So let's go on to 2951. So 2951 gave us the uh, Scorpius and that was it. Uh, pretty much just the Scorpius, which is again, very cool ship, but it was the only thing. So we got one concept at Invictus for 2021, and it was a fighter. Now, keep in mind, this is also in the pandemic was in full swing. So CIG was kind of figuring out the whole work from home thing like we all were. So here we are. Uh, but again, fighter, heavy fighter, but a fighter. Now we get into 2952, and again, they sell all of the concept ships that are kind of combat. You can see that there's a couple in here that are kind of questionable, like the Mustang Delta, uh, the MPUV, the 100i. They are selling things now that aren't technically military ships, but they do kind of have a combat focus. Uh, but in this one, they sold the Legionnaire, which was that boarding ship and the mule, which is that six wheeled little Drake vehicle. That's like a one seater. That's basically for moving cargo. So calling it a combat ship is being very generous with the word combat. It's kind of like having a bicycle and saying, yeah, but troops could ride it. And 
there you go. So again, two relatively small ships. Well, I guess the Legionnaire is big enough to carry 10 people, but it's a drop ship. Uh, but moving on, let's look at 2953. So 2953, you can see that the, uh, the pages are getting slicker here as we go. Like uh, CIG is kind of finding their footing, um, working from home. So again, or yeah, actually, I guess 2953, they were mostly kind of moving to that hybrid mode. But the ships that we got in this year was the Fury and the Storm. Uh, so two vehicles, uh, well, one's a vehicle and the little, the stank, the little tank with the uh, little one seer tank and the Fury and the Fury L. X? No, the LX is the racer. The the other one, MX, uh, with all the missiles. They came out with those two variants. Uh, neither one of them have a jump drive, both very small vehicles, all considered. So that is kind of the theme of Invictus, is they will usually give you access to the big, expensive ships to buy. And like the really big ones, they'll do limited waves on. Uh, but generally, they'll sell small vehicles that you can use as an LTI token. So this year, uh, the Pulse is going to be a 323 release. I don't think it's going to be an Invictus release. We do have some hints what we'll be dropping in this year's Invictus. So let's go ahead and get into that. Let's go ahead and watch the trailer. So you're probably already seeing things. Like beards. Okay, let's roll back through this. So first up, you got the F7C, but obviously you have the Polaris. So the people that were all thinking that the Polaris was going to be flight ready in this thing, and I was saying, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it's not. This thing is just going to be um, a shell. So basically what we had for the Idris for years was the outside of it was pretty much work complete. I think that's what we'll get for the Polaris. We'll be able to attack it and see how it acts. Uh, they'll certainly want us to do that so that they can get ideas for its metrics and whether it will hold up to combat the way they think it should, kind of like they did with the Idris. Like you fight the Idris now, it used to be you could solo an Idris in an arrow. You can't really do that anymore. Uh, and they'll want to do the same sort of pass with the Polaris, especially since it's in Squadron 42. But this won't be a ship we'll be walking around in the interior, and it certainly won't be flight ready. Uh, I'm sure creative people will figure out how to steal it like they did with the Idris, but... Again, um, it's mostly just there for visuals. It's a shell. Uh, so sorry to ruin the dreams of people there, but that's what I do here. That's why you guys watch me. Now, one that will be there is the F7A. Uh, pretty good bet that that one goes. I don't know if it'll go on concept sale or not, since it's just the F7C. People will get access to it if they did all of the uh, Xeno threat things, but the F7A, there it is. That one's not really a surprise. There's a little bit better view of it. Yeah, that thing is just covered in guns. Next one up is here. You can sort of see there's medical guys. I don't know if this is a shout out to uh, med runners or not. Might be. Or it might be med runner saw the picture and they went with her. It's kind of interesting that he has two med guns. Just bring more ammo for it, dude. Uh, if you look behind him, there's the medical Ursa. So that'll give us the next thing. Of course, you got the Polaris in the background. And here we go. New MPUV in the background. Uh, so the UV in MPUV stands for utility vehicle. The MPUV is made for moving things around and it's modular. You can see that the little bit right here is out 
of the MPUV. And let me call up a picture of an MPUV real quick. So if you look right here, you can sort of see that this is the personnel version or the cargo version. Uh, this part is currently attached. One of the things we're getting in the very near future is modularity, and that'll enable us to actually use the MPUV the way it's supposed to be, where it's just this top part up here, and this little part is pl plug and play. That's the modular part. And so you can see in this image, that part is gone. So they've actually instilled modularity, instilled or installed. They implemented <laughs> modularity into this thing. And you can sort of see it has a big tractor beam up here, which again, utility vehicle, I imagine they'll probably have a mining laser and a salvage laser too, and like a small ability to do it, maybe. Uh, but I wouldn't count on that. The tractor beam is the thing that I would expect. This thing is made to basically just move things around a local area. Obviously it does not have a uh, quantum drive. Wouldn't read too much into this one. I think they're just trying to show as many loops as they could. They just wanted to fly by with the uh, with the players. It's a looking good. Look at all those, <laughs> all the guns on that thing. That thing's going to be crazy when it's in the game, which will not be Invictus. So of course, I'll end it on beards because. That's cool. We've been waiting a little while for them to sort of add more variations into the faces. We're going to be getting those new faces. I'm assuming we're going to get 323 probably this week, uh, which means we'll be getting some sort of 323. whatever patch for Invictus, whether it'll be the fame 323.x patch with the Retaliator and all that stuff. Kind of doubt it because that's like a week in between like serious numbered patches, I doubt it. Uh, so the tally will be a little bit further down the line. They might drop it on us for Invictus just because uh, it looks like they mostly solved those issues, um, at least according to John Crew. Uh, what I would say about the Invictus sale in general is that it's a good time to build CCU chains, especially when you have something like the Mirai Pulse in there. Uh, it's good for that. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. So again, just looking at the demographics of this game, looking at the demographics of my channel, most of the people that are into Star Citizen remember Chris Roberts from the old days, like Wing Commander. So we're all 30s, 40s, 50s or older. Um, we all have careers. We all have money. I'd say spend wisely, but you know that. Uh, yeah you probably won't win the F5 wars because there are bots out there that can spam it 3,000 times in the time it takes your finger to start reaching for the F5 button. Uh, but you might. I got lucky once with the Kraken. Uh, didn't end up getting it because there was a bug uh, that wouldn't let me use the credit to get it because I basically melted my whole fleet to rebuild it. Not my whole fleet, but most of my fleet got rid of all my little ships to get the Kraken. And then the Kraken came up. I actually won the F5 war and it wouldn't let me do it. And by the time I had gone to uh, the helpline and all that, it, it didn't matter. I had already kind of decided to go a different way with my fleet. And the Carnival already has two Krakens doesn't need a third that would bring me to my last point that it is kind of if you really want to have one of those big ships just join an org with a few people that have spent too much money on this game because they won't be able to fly all of their ships at once all their big ass ships they're going to need people to command and crew those ships so that would be my suggestion there one final point i want to make on invictus and cig sales in general is kind of like i was saying earlier cig will have sales or they used to have sales every single month and we kind of got spoiled. Like every single month we'd get a concept. Problem is that they'd start getting a backlog of all of these ships they hadn't made. And so they started to do sort of quarterly sales where they'd have a concept or a couple small concepts. They stopped rolling out the gigantic concepts every once in a while and just kind of concentrated like one at IAE. Um, 
Invictus has always kind of been the smaller ships were the concepted ones. I think this is kind of another sign of maturity by CIG is the sense that they're kind of trying to land the big sales quarterly this one is almost halfway through the year so they have a really big sale in mid-year and we're gonna have alien week spotted with a couple smaller sales and then the really big sale at the end of the year with ia and the anniversary sale um but yeah we're just not getting bombarded with sales anymore and it's kind of nice because it doesn't feel quite as predatory, but still has that sort of FOMO aspect where you feel like, oh crap, there's not going to be another sale until I eat, so I have to get this thing now. And um, I'd say avoid that, but I guarantee come June, we're going to see a big spike in CIG sales. Uh, that's what I expect to see. And gang, that's all I got for this one. Go ahead, like, comment down below whatever, all those things. And uh, let me know what you think. Catch me next time.